The joy of the Lord is my strength. 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 Great old song we used to sing when we were kids a long time ago, but hey, you know, seems like that song got deleted. Yeah, this is a fireside chat. I hope you're feeling quite chipper because doing a little debate today with a uh, famous Dennis Prager and his fireside chats and his happiness hour, which he says is quite different from joy. And joy, you don't really understand because, you know, it's deeper and it's hard to understand. And happiness is much different, you see. Hmm, is that from the Talmud that you learned that, Mr. Prager? As I don't see that in the scripture, or was that part of your commentary that you love to talk about in your fireside chats and your radio shows? Well, let's see what we've got here at Mr. Prager's Theology. Because you see, Mr. Prager, you do have much support from many people. Oh, yes, indeed. But... The things you say don't always line up, you see, because are you orthodox or non-orthodox? And what part of Talmud do you believe? Are you into that Jesus boils and crap idea as many others you see? Hmm, I don't know, but some of the things that you say, like how... The Pharisees were so misunderstood because... They didn't really, well, they weren't, like, that full of hypocrisy, like my king like to point out, or anything about blasphemy. Now, Mr. Prager, please do tell. I've never heard any discussion on how blasphemy finds no forgiveness in this life or the life to come. And so what exactly is your faith that you hold so dear as you reject that king that comes? That Philippians 2 says every knee will bow to, but you in your great radio show that claims to be Judeo-Christian say, well, I don't believe in that Jesus because otherwise I'd be a Christian, you see. And thus, well, that's not who I perceive myself to be. Well, maybe, Mr. Prager, you are those ones that want to rule instead of a king? Oh, were you trying to take his place? That's why you don't believe in him, you see. Oh, yes, that would be it, huh? Like maybe that synode Satan likes to push on people that says that Jesus boils in crap. Well, that's a Jesus I never knew. But maybe you know him quite well, Mr. Prager, because you have your fireside chats with your, what are they, $50 cigars? While I inhale organic tobacco, and you curse at that, saying, well, I smoke cigars, and that's not the same, you see. Hmm. Judge not, lest ye be judged, Mr. Prager, and I think the joy that you lack might have nothing to do with happiness. Or maybe it's orchestrated happiness, as you love to be a conductor. Well... I know this is TMI, as Mr. Prager doesn't like to give TMI too much. He likes to tell out little tidbits of his beautiful wisdom, you see. But I haven't heard him debate anyone. But he loves to put out his little Shapiro boy, who thinks he might actually be the Messiah in disguise that we just don't know yet. Hmm, does that fit with you too, Mr. Prager? Who thinks that the hypocrisy was so misunderstood of those Pharisees? 
Yes, they were quite great, don't you see? Oh, those Pharisees. Yes, they were misunderstood. They actually needed to kill my king. Was that what it was, Mr. Prager? Oh, please do tell. I haven't heard your Jewish version of what actually happened. Nor did I hear your support of Mel Gibson and how he made the movie. Or were you one of those ones that loved to jump on his drunken fit when he got a DUI? Hmm. Oh, he was one of those, was it? Oh, please, Mr. Prager, do tell of your great wisdom. Like when you had your little debate? Or was it that understanding of how Mr. Prager knows God like Jordan Peterson? We can compare notes. And then Jordan Peterson made you look like a proud, arrogant Pharisee? Modern style? Thinking that because of your New York heritage, you must be of God. Oh, really? Please do tell more of that, Mr. Prager, because that's wisdom I do not quite understand. Or is it a wisdom of the world that my king calls foolishness? Hmm... I listened to Mr. Prager many years and thought it was really interesting, his wisdom and how he loved to join hands with that Judeo-Christian feel. But I did notice there seemed to be this toxic allergy from the word king fitting with the word Jesus. Whenever we talked about these lovely Christians... Hmm. Not a king to come that you would bow to, Mr. Prager. Or were you going to suddenly have a change of heart after believing all these years that my king's been boiling in crap? Oh, well. Maybe it's time to compare notes on how you came up with your commentary so far, Mr. Prager. And have you already come up with the part of the Ten Commandments and why Moses had to throw them down because lightning came from heaven to strike down the orgy that had begun? Hmm. Was that what you mentioned in your commentary? Along with how... Following the two greatest commandments would summarize all the law and the prophets. But yet I never hear you talking about that bringing happiness on your radio show. No, no, no. Hmm. Wow, the depth of the wisdom of Mr. Prager. Please do tell. Because your book on happiness talked about it being a problem. And maybe... There might be two more than that. It might be not such a irony or play on words. Maybe your whole happiness theme is a little 3D chess of your own. Did you invest in Trump's gold coins that seem to have disappeared all of a sudden? Those shekels that he had investments made in? go along with some of your rabbis' beliefs, are they? Well, just do tell, Mr. Prager, or are we clamming up now and putting guest hosts on so you can cover your tracks? Oh, please. The wisdom. Or so do you call it that comes from yourself? Hmm... Wasn't that my king who said, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the Pharisees, you have no part in the kingdom? Hmm, was that the, that the, that's not the kingdom you're trying to be in, Mr. Prager, you such a wise man. Well, what were you planning to do then? Rule over my king? Hmm, oh, please do tell. I just don't understand your theology, Mr. Prager. But then again, we aren't all allowed to read your Talmud, or are you orthodox enough to read it all yourself? Hmm. 
I do wish you would really open up things and give us some of the... soul of wit, as in brevity, and not many words that are filled with things that sound kind of like the prayers of the Pharisees. They were known for their many words. They didn't say much, though. Hmm. Isn't that why women say 25,000 words a day and men are supposed to say 10? But some teachers say more about Mr. Prager. It doesn't mean you become womanly. It means that you increase in wisdom until you're told to teach, not until you tell everyone else how wise your teachings have made you. So one more thing, Mr. Prager. Just remember, let not a strong man boast of his strength, nor a wise man boast of his wisdom, which I think I've heard you do at least a dozen times. And that would be since I stopped regularly listening to you. So, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the Pharisees, who you call misunderstood as hypocrites, well... Unless it exceeds that you have no part in the kingdom, and so I don't know what kingdom you're planning on being in, Mr. Prager, with all of your great wisdom, but it seems like it's looking a little cold-blooded now, and you don't seem to be such a friend of these Christians if you really do believe that my king has been boiling in crap, and it would, nice, would be nice if you would just come out and say it instead of playing little word games. Sounds like you're 3D chessing on the radio. Because many are coming to see the doctrines of men make sons of hell. And if you aren't part of that group, it might be good for you to lay out your faith as it really dwells within your heart. Because from the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. And what comes out of your mouth, well, are a lot of ads right now. Well, I see we're really hard for money as we all go broke and the dollar turns to peso. But you don't need to remind us that every three minutes you gotta do another shill show. So please, Mr. Fireside Chat and what is it? Learn more in a minute from Prager U than you'll learn in a university? Well, universities have been BS since the 80s when I quit. So, uh, if I was at the sister school of Stanford, I don't know what you're bragging about with that, Mr. Prager. But, oh, yes, I guess you do want to pat yourself on the back for all your wisdom that you need everybody to see. <laughs> yes, but when my king comes, he might really reevaluate that wisdom. Hmm, yes, you see. So thank you so much for your time and debate, Mr. Prager, and all your terrible wisdom. And watch out for the hypocrisy and blasphemy which still happens today. And if you seem to be thinking that you're speaking for God and you're not, that means you are already in that synagogue of Satan. And those voices you hear that you think are of God? Well, they might be of a God, but they have nothing to do with my king or Abraham's or Noah's or Adam's too? Oh dear, Mr. Prager, what part of the sands of the sea were you? Please do tell. I'm dying to hear. I didn't see it in your new commentary.